Hey everybody, Matt here. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to Imagine Then Make. In this video, we're going to do some more work with LibreCAD on the laptop computer. Specifically, we're going to look at drawing using the command line. So I've just launched LibreCAD. I haven't done any drawing yet, so there's no drawing in the workspace. And you can see I'm working with an unnamed document. This video is about learning how to draw using the command line. So in order to see the command line, mouse up to widgets, left mouse click, slide your mouse down to dock widgets, slide your mouse over to the right, and then highlight command line. Left mouse click and there you will see a new window that's anchored on the right hand side of your drawing area called command line. Now it is possible to left mouse click and drag the window to different spots on your screen. You can leave it floating, you can dock it on the left side, on the top, on the bottom but I prefer having it docked on the right hand side of the screen next to the drawing area, but it is a personal preference. You can also make it a little bit narrower by mousing over to the edge of the window. As soon as your mouse cursor changes, you can left click and hold down that left mouse button and then drag to the right to make the window a little bit narrower. So down here, there, this is where the actual command line entry is made. Okay, so when I left mouse clicked into this box, the label command turned blue from black. If I press the escape key, now the command box is deactivated, the label is changed back to black. If I left mouse click in the box again, it's turned to blue, which means that it's activated. The upper area here is where all of your commands that you enter are going to be displayed along with coordinate information for the different commands to use. But you might be wondering what commands can you actually use or enter into the command line box? Well, there is a PDF document that's available on the LibreCAD website, LibreCAD Users Extensive Manual. I guess it's from 2017. And in this PDF document, if you scroll down, you'll get to a table of contents. You keep scrolling and you'll get to a section about the command line and specifically we're going to look at the command list and functionality which happens to be located on page 25 of this pdf so we left mouse click on that and then you see a whole list of different commands along with the action and so on so there's a lot of them here of course we're not going to do all of them we're just going to take a look at some real basic ones just to get you started. We'll look at the circle command. We'll look at the line command. We'll look at the rectangle command. We'll look at the undo command and the zoom auto command okay there's one other command that i'll show you too that i don't see in this list but it can be pretty useful it's just called the clear command so i'll show that to you as well so let's start with doing a real simple command let's do the rectangle command so i'm going to move the mouse pointer into this box the command line box and i'm going to left mouse click and that turns the word command blue that indicates that it's activated now i'm going to type in the command that i want to run 
and I want to run the rectangle command, there is an abbreviated form for the command, just R-E-C-T. If I type that in and press enter on my laptop keyboard, now you see up here in the command line history, there's my R-E-C-T entry, and it accepted it because it translated it to the rectangle command. Now the prompt down here has changed to specify first corner. So my personal preference for doing drawings is always to reference everything from the origin. That just happens to be my personal preference. So for this first simple example, let's make the lower left-hand corner of the rectangle at the origin. So I just type in 0, 0. So 0, 0 represents an x-y coordinate pair. So this is the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis is the y-axis. So when I type in the coordinates 0, 0 and press enter, my coordinate pair here, x-y pair, is now echoed into the command history and output box, and the prompt is now changed to specify second corner. So what I'm going to do is just type in 1, 1 and press Enter. So there's my XY coordinate pair. So 0, 0 is the lower left corner of the rectangle, and 1, 1 is the upper right-hand corner of the rectangle. Now, you see here that the prompt says specify first corner in blue. That means that LibreCAD is still running the rectangle command. If you no longer want to run the rectangle command, just press escape on, the, on your keyboard, and that deactivates the command line box and change the prompt here back to a black word that just spells command. Now here's the small rectangle that we drew. Now why is it only this big? Well our grid down here is set at 1 slash 10. If you're not familiar with how to use the grid please go back and watch my earlier video. I'll put a link on the screen and also leave a link in the video description of this video so that you can better understand the grid. Okay, so if I want to make this box bigger in the screen, I don't want to change its dimensions, I just want to make it larger, then what I could use here is another command line command. If I left mouse click, once again to turn the word command blue, activating the command box, and I type in ZA press enter. That stands for zoom auto. It does the same thing as this button up here except this button is labeled auto zoom. So what this does is it zooms your drawing to the full extent that it can uh, and, and um, to make everything visible. So where that can be really useful is let's just say that a big part of our drawing was off the screen like so. If I type in Z, Z A, hit enter, now I can see the full drawing again. Likewise, if for some reason I'm zoomed way out and it almost appears like I don't have any drawing entities on the workspace at all, I can go down here, type in ZA, press enter, and lo and behold, there's my drawing entity. Now you can see that with every command that I enter in the command line box, it gets echoed up here in the command uh, history and output box. So you can kind of keep track historically of what command you typed in when. All right, so that was simple enough. So let's try. A, uh, let's try a circle command. So let's left mouse click in the command box. We'll type in the word circle, press enter on the keyboard, and now it's it knows we are trying to run the circle command. And the prompt is asked for 
uh, has changed to specify center. So let's just keep it simple for this first sort of series of exercises. We'll type in 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5, press enter. And now it says specify the radius. Once again, we'll keep it simple and we'll put in 0 0.5 again. And there's a circle that fills the rectangle. Actually, it's drawn as a square, right? All four sides are the same length. So there's a circle that fills the square that we drill, drew earlier. Okay, let's keep going. You can see that specify center is still blue, meaning LibreCAD thinks we're, we still want to draw circles. Well, let's not draw any more circles. Let's hit the escape on the keyboard. Now it's changed back to a black uh, command prompt. Let's left mouse click in here in the box again and we'll type in um, spell it correctly line l-i-n-e press enter now it's asking to specify the first point let's do zero comma zero press enter now it wants the next point well maybe you'll guess it i'm going to put in one comma one and press enter and there's our diagonal line across from one corner of the box to the other. Now let's specify the next point. So I'm going to press escape and now I'm going to left mouse click into the command box again and I'm going to type in command, press enter, and now I want the first point to be at the upper left hand corner of my square which is located at 0, 1 press enter and then the second point for my line I want I want in the at the bottom right hand corner of my square which is located at 1 comma 0 press enter and there we go press escape twice now we've exited the line command and we have our our shape okay very simple um, everything is referenced from the origin. That's the way I prefer to do it. It makes it easier to keep track of the numbers that you need to type in for your coordinate positions. So, so far we've, all we've drawn is some very simple shapes, a square, a circle inside the square, and a couple of diagonal lines. And I did this deliberately so that you can hopefully um, correlate the drawing coordinates for the different drawing commands with where the the lines line up on the grid based on the grid settings down here. Let me take one quick second, well maybe a minute or two, to just go over this really quickly because moving forward from this point it's going to be really important that you understand the uh, XY coordinate system. All right, so let's just take a minute or two to make sure that you understand the uh, coordinate pairs that you have to enter in here, the XY coordinates for the different commands that you might want to use in the command line. So <clears throat> this is the origin, and so its location along the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, and the y-axis, which is the vertical axis, where those two axes meet or cross is called the origin, and it has a coordinate location of 0 along the x-axis and also 0 along the y-axis. Now, if you look down here, at all of these numbers, if I click right there on the origin, hopefully you can see that the origin is located at 0, comma, 0. Okay, so when we go to draw 
any sort of an entity, let's say just a simple line, and we want to start at the origin, which is located at 0, comma 0, and let's say we want to draw it diagonally up to this location right here. Well, this location right here is located at the x-coordinate of, of 1 and the y-coordinate of 1. And it's 1, the number 1, because of the grid. Okay, so if I go back, just to try and really make sure that this is understood, now I'm on this point of the grid, and it's located at 1, 1. 1 in the x direction from the origin, and 1 in the y direction also from the origin. So if I was to try and draw a line, and I left click in the command box, and I type in the command line, and I press enter, and the first point of the line is at location 0, 0, and then the second um, point is located at 1, 1. Now, you, hopefully, you understand why that line was drawn from 0, 0 to 1, 1 and why it looks that way. Now, of course, you don't have to draw lines that line up right on the grid. And most of the time in the real world, if you're making a drawing for a particular kind of part or something for a machine, the dimensions are not going to be nice and even like this. They're going to be some odd number. So let me just try and demonstrate that a little bit. So I'll do an undo command. And let's just say that I want to create a line. And I want it to go from, not from one of the grid points, but say from that location, which if you watch this area of the screen, you'll see the coordinates for that particular point. And as I move the mouse around, you'll see that the XY coordinates for the point change. So let's just say I want the first point to be somewhere around there. So that's 0.239 and 0.649. So 0.239 comma 0.649. I think that's what I said. Press enter. These are obviously coordinates that don't line up with any of the grid points. And you can see it's already plotted that first point. Now, if for some reason I wanted to use the mouse to position the second point, the next point that it's asking for down here, I could specify the location of that second point by using the mouse. But this video is all about using the command line so let's say I want to do uh, 0.94 and 0 0.05. So 0.94 comma 0 0.05. Press enter. All right, and so that's my line. And you can clearly see that the endpoints of the line don't correspond in any way to the points that make up the grid. So one of the powerful features of using the command line is that you can put in very detailed dimensions, irregardless of what the grid setting is, and create very accurate drawing entities, lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, all sorts of things. Bye.